Excellent. We are <laughs> we are live. <laughs> We're in business, boys. After a series of fuck ups done by people who shall not be named. Hi. <laughs> All right. Well. <clears throat> Well, hello there, and welcome to another episode of the Astartes Anonymous podcast, where today we're going to explore some of the unintentional cliffhangers that have been pumped out by the men and women at the Black Library. And in this effort, we are joined by none other than the man with three distinct chairs with purposes that I cannot mention for monetization purposes. Uh, So sit down and get comfy, as I am once again joined by... God's bravest night lord and a drain on America's medical infrastructure. <laughs> uh, I'm your host, Moots, Sweden's tallest gnome, and these are my co hosts. Hello, I am God's bravest driver <clears throat> on his busiest roads. <laughs> I am America's strongest proponent for universal health care. You are the reason we don't have universal health care. <laughs> I want your tax dollars coming to me. <laughs> Give me insulin. <laughs> I need it. <laughs> this is what my fucking government tax dollars go to. Slop. Just to produce, like, subpar Warhammer videos. <laughs> <laughs> One day I'll get to that point. <laughs> One day I'll be popular enough. I'll be good enough. <laughs> One day I'll be good enough to be a drain on society. Listen, you already appeared on this podcast. You're pretty much a burnout. <laughs> It's, 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 it's already over for me. Just the message hasn't gone through yet. It's so, the, the Astartes Anonymous podcast is like the Warhammer YouTube equivalent of Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Ooh! Damn. Alright, before we roast uh, ourselves more, uh, how about we continue on with the uh, models of the week? Very well. We shall do Collins first. Right. Okay. I have chosen a uh, a big old Croxagor by Shiny. It's a uh, it's it's a nice red color, which I don't I don't, I don't see too many red lizardmen, which kind of grabbed my eye. And uh, that is true. It's a uh, it's red and gold, which you don't see you see gold on lizardmen, but usually not like lining them. So I think that was I thought that was really well done. It looks like he has a really bad rash. That's that's an everywhere rash. If that's what you're thinking of, <laughs> he's all rash. That is that is 100 percent rash. He is not. He's freshly molted, actually. Look, he might be freshly molted, but he could probably still beat me to death with minimal effort required. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say zero. I'd like to think I can dodge like one swing, but you know, after that, like. Pfft. Gate, gate, all bets are off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after the first fucking dodge, you're just so winded that the follow up gets you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's it's a nice, it's a nice Crocs gore. It, it really is. It is wonderful Crocs, very gore. Good job. Crocs out for Harambe. And um, then we have Reds. Red, do you want to talk about this cool guy? He's a fella. Behold. It is a tree, dude, and he found a cool stick. <laughs> that is the entire reason I picked this one, is because he's like, hey, check out this stick I found. And he's like, showed it off. It, it's like, um, it's like the, the, the boys will get this. They, they will appreciate this. A- any, any man, really, any person, honestly, can just enjoy a really nice stick. So It's a very powerful stick, an autumn stick, even. It is. It is. Probably a magical stick. <laughs> it casts spell beat you to fucking death <laughs> <laughs> no one's really arguing he's not a wizard because no one walks away from that argument <laughs> <laughs> he cast head trauma Ooh, me when I'm three years old <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> That's an unrelated story. Pa- pa- pancreas no work, Lord, right here, right now. <laughs> no, it was it was two years old. You ever see a trebuchet? Yes. Well, imagine that, but I'm locked in a stroller and my feet are the fulcrum, and I just got a catapult into concrete trying to stop myself. <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> I. Well, Okay, I'm not worrying about it, Jesus Christ. (laughs) (laughs) That fucking mental image. Oh my god. Imagine imagine a piece of wood falling forward, except I was the piece of wood. (laughs) 
He's never been the same since that accident. <laughs> and now he's a Warhammer YouTuber. It all makes sense. <laughs> that was when his pancreas stopped working. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Chimp Wukong, for both the wonderful mini and somehow me segueing this into brain damage with <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Very nice, very nice coloring, very cool model. Good job. And then we have uh, the one I picked, which is by Albi the Slayer. Um, what does he slay? The, I don't know. Bitches. <laughs> Bitches. <laughs> that was the most generic answer you could have given. <laughs> well, at least I gave an answer. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Silence is also an option, Collins. <laughs> Were YouTubers impossible? <laughs> that is a fact. That's true. <laughs> Shit, we're bad YouTubers if we if we do. Ne- next, so next yes, stories an anonymous video is just us fucking staying silent for about forty five minutes <laughs> <laughs> with Krunker Strike gameplay, followed by a gunshot at the end. Then it goes to fucking credits. <laughs> <laughs> Who off themselves, the mystery may never be revealed. (laughs) It was only one. (laughs) Find out next week who died. (laughs) So yes, this is a wonderful little diorama by Albi the Slayer. And uh, it's a bunch of really nice Black Templars. And uh, I... uh, Yeah, I don't know. I I saw this and I was like, damn, this is uh, really cool. I mean, super well done. The uh, painting is really nice. And uh, uh, I don't feel like we get dioramas all that much um, in the models of the week. So this is really cool. Yeah, I I like the color palette. They seem to stick to that, like, John Blanche. There's this very specific color palette that John Blanche uses, where it, it focuses mainly on, like, sepia and dark tones. And I, I dig it. I, I, I dig the uh, whole, the browns and the grays and the splashes of red and all that stuff. So it makes all like the little bits of color, like the energy and the power sword stick out that much more too. Yeah, and the flame and uh, yeah, the, the little, it, it's, it's really nice. It's really classic Grimdark, as you said. Uh, I'm a huge fan. Uh, I'm also like just, you know, just looking at the backside of that banner as well. That's just fucking super nice. I'm, I'm just, I'm just caught up on that shit. Super nice. Thank you very much, Albi the Slayer. And uh, uh, yes, I think that was it. So today we have Mental Gen. Mental Gen. Today we have co opted known YouTuber Pancreas No Work to bitch about Warhammer lore for the next 45 to an hour. <laughs> Truly something that's never been done before. Literally no one in the community have <laughs> never done this. Never. We are the first and the only ones. We are pioneers in this field. Pi- ex- exactly. Speaking of pioneers, war fucking the Black Library and Games Workshop seem to be pioneering the idea of never fucking finishing a single story. <laughs> or if they do finish it, nothing but plot holes. Endless plot holes. Nothing but more questions that need to be answered. Much like the latest season of Umbrella Academy, which I just finished. And my god, was that such a massive disappointment. I cannot get over it. Me, I, let's, to not derail the conversation too much already, uh, me and Red had a discussion this morning. <laughs> just back and forth <laughs> messages. Us both being like, yeah, that... It doesn't make me mad. It's just it's just a whole bunch of nothing. It's it's just it doesn't accomplish anything. <laughs> it it leaves it just takes time. It just takes time. Oh, such a nice setup just super nothing ending and uh, spoilers, I guess. Sorry if anyone's watching this we should have a person by that. Yeah, surprise Umbrella Academy review, motherfuckers. S- surprise. <laughs> But yes, uh, Black Library and Games Workshop in general are um, unfortunately pretty good at leaving stories um, just at at an open end uh, with no real conclusion in sight. Or just having shit happen that makes no fucking sense and they never draw attention to it. Ergo, example, why the fuck is the lion's armor green? (laughs) 
forest. That's true. He he just comes out with it green. He, he, the green happened after like Caliban fucking exploded and the lion was put into a coma. And then he like I I haven't so first off I haven't read The Son of the Forest yet. I don't think I will <laughs> because it's a Dark Angels book. <laughs> but from what I know, he just kind of wakes up and fucks off and no one fucking knows and and for some reason he was just like huh i guess the dark angels are green now so i'll be green too why <laughs> your armor should be black you're the lion you you uh, it makes no fucking sense also why is he old they never fucking bring that up he was in a stasis field just like gilliman and, it, he, and he's old now was he yes oh i thought i thought he was just Sleeping. Uh, yeah, I honestly thought he was just napping. No, no. I didn't know there was a stasis field. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was in. They put him in a stasis field just like they did with Gilliman. Just Gilliman was in a coma and the lion was napping, also in a coma. <laughs> I suppose. I have a simple answer for that one. It's, you know, it's just simply because Gilliman is better. He's just built different. He's <laughs> built better. It's logistics, baby. Literally the best Primarch. <laughs> there, there is also the funnier alternative, in my opinion, that which is that at some point the Watchers in the Dark took the lion out of stasis and lit just put him. And just beat him with those sticks that they found. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just, they just wheelchaired him out and put him in some armor they found. <laughs> this looks fitting. They, they're, they're just dressing him up, you know, playing doll with him, and they're like. <laughs> They were they were kit bashing on him. They were like, hell yeah, this this looks cool. Yeah, they're just fucking playing with the lion's unconscious body, and then he suddenly wakes up one day and he's just like, oh, and they're like, ah, and he just they fucking he runs off into the forest, and the watch is like, ah, oh, fuck, what are we going to do? And so then they take like a bunch of pillows and they put like a blanket over it to like. And then, and then, like, to try and, like, keep the dark, dark angels away from looking any further. He's just like, no, he's totally asleep. Don't worry about it. Trust us. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think, they're, like, extra dimensional beings or whatever, so they probably don't really get time. So it's like, yeah, they're like, oh, it's been 10,000 years you left him out of his little nap chamber. Like, uh, uh, oh, no. We play dollies with the funny man. <laughs> 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 you know, like you're fucking sharpie all over him when he wakes up. He's like, who, who, what the fuck? <laughs> sharpie the penis on his forehead, like. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, if, if, if you look close enough, there's a big old dick somewhere on his model. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, uh, they're, they're just busy in, in the fucking lion sleeping chamber. He just rolls over and they can't pick him back up because he's a fucking giant. So <laughs> they just leave him there. And then like 10,000 years later, the lion wakes up. And he's like, <laughs> like when you wake up from a nap and you don't know what fucking year it is. And he's like that all fucked up. Fucking like drooled so much that it's like stuck his tunic to him. She's like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I'd uh, I'd like to propose an alternate theory though on the other end of things that uh, is that there was an ultramarine mm -hmm. whose sole job was to every like I don't know ten years or something turn off Gilliman's stasis field and just lather that man in skin cream. <laughs> just way <laughs> dream job, honestly, brother Cassius. It is your duty to lather the Primarch in cocoa butter. <laughs> <laughs> I will do it with dignity, brother. He must be as beautiful as when he was put in, brother. <laughs> We must preserve the Primarch's prime genes. <laughs> His ultra genes, mm, yes. <laughs> His ultra genes. We're not the Iron Hands looking good as part of his stick. <laughs> It's part. It's part of the reason people like him. Well, sp speaking of uh, uh, Gilliman, th there is a couple of plot points there as well that I think we've been uh, <laughs> we could mention. Uh, There's so many fucking things that happened with Gilliman. You could fucking be here all day with him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my, I think. My, I think my personal favorite is the. Uh, well, uh, I think you mentioned before we started recording, Red the. Uh, Inari, uh, the, sorry, not the Inari, the Eldar and Imperium Alliance that just seemed to... So, for those who don't know, when Gilman wakes up and he starts, like, be becoming, like, the fucking Emperor Junior, he straight up tells the Imperium, 
no more killing Eldar. They're our friends now. We need to fucking work together. And you assholes running around killing them isn't going to help anyone's fucking plans. <laughs> and then Warhammer Plus happened. And the first episode of Bolter and Chainsword is a bunch of fucking Ultramarine Primaris killing Eldar. <laughs> like, they did they not get the memo? <laughs> <laughs> you, can't even, yeah, you can't even be like, oh, it's a lost chapter in some corner of the galaxy. No, that's the Ultramarines. <laughs> like, like, straight up, just the Ultramarines just start killing a whole bunch of Eldar for no reason. <laughs> Why? <laughs> clearly, the Eldars were just in the way. It's uh... Yes, clearly the Eldar are to blame here. <laughs> it was definitely their fault. Yeah, they were they they were parked in the handicap zone, <laughs> <laughs> so the Imperium had to respond in force. <laughs> they parked their craft world on the yeah the the craft world handicap spot. <laughs> parked on the handicap spot didn't pay the highway toll. <laughs> that 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 wasn't even like a strike force. That was just what the Imperium sends to tax collect. <laughs> just a full contingent of fucking ultramarines at your doorstep right fucking now <laughs> pay your taxes up motherfuckers I, I think what we saw in that episode is the result of when you try to contest like a parking ticket in the imperium <laughs> <laughs> yes that that is that the entire point of that was they were contesting a fucking parking ticket <laughs> <laughs> What's the fucking meme? My my lawyer looking at me as I talk my, my way into a death sentence. <laughs> I got the parking ticket. <laughs> Look, maybe it was them trying to do them a favor. You know, Wraith Guard are really tough, but the Eldar's gotta die first. So. Right, yeah, of course. We're giving you better units with our guns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're just like, let it allow us to kill you. It will work out. And they summon fucking Cain. And just like, stop. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, summoning Cain is like the death knell of an Eldar army. <laughs> Except that one time where the fucking K avatar of Cain kicked the absolutely ever living shit out of a Slaneshi demon prince. That did happen. That was really awesome. But that wasn't. They used to be a fucking dark Eldar, apparently. Oh. Oh, wait, what is this from? That's cool. I'm thinking of a different time he's done that. That's in the Caiaphas Cain book, isn't it? Oh, I don't think that was a Dark Elder. I think that was just some lady hitting on Cain in one of the side stories. Oh. But yeah, that 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 that, that avatar had absolutely no fucking time for that woman. <laughs> no, no, that avatar showed up and obliterated her. <laughs> he was standing on business. I can respect that. If only he'd stood on business more, GW. <laughs> yeah, if only he could keep staying on business. Fucking, I, I desperately want more fucking Avatar of Kane being, like, actually fucking cool in the setting. Mm. He's, it's such a cool concept. It's right there, please. But no, he, he must be killed for a thousandth time to prove that a Space Spring character is strong. Fuck you, GW. <laughs> To, to be fair, I think it, it gets a cool moment in that uh, Hammer and Bolter episode. I, I think... What are you ta wait, wait, what are you talking about? He shows up, in 30 seconds later, 10 Ultramarines surround him and fire at him point blank range, and he goes down. What? I think there was more than that. No, there wasn't. It was literally like 10 seconds into the Avatar Kane showing up. All the Ultramarines had to do was surround him and fire at him at, from like a foot away. <laughs> Like I think I think he he got he got like six space marine kills and a dreadnought, which mm. I mean you know you take down a dreadnought you know that's that's pretty good. But also like look man, I've had Avid, I've had Kane on the tabletop. If he's taking out six marines and a dreadnought, that's not good. That is not equi that is not the law of equivalent exchange. <laughs> These are not even when that happens. <laughs> Well, uh, maybe maybe I've just been I imagining like a happier timeline where he did a whole lot more. M maybe maybe I was just <laughs> trying to Im Im fill in the blanks. Well, believe me, I'm no stranger to copium over Kane. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the years and years of books uh, we've gotten, we've only gotten one example of the Avatar of Kane actually winning a fight. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. 
I think there's two, actually. Unfortunately, the first one was from, like, 1980, when they introduced the guy. Of course. He got his he got his obligatory cool guy moment before being relegated to the fucking back burner of chumps in the setting. Much like the Yanari. Oh, I was going to ask when we... <laughs> Oy, nice segue there. That's actually one... I, I was really excited. I'm really excited to talk about this one because I really like the Unari. I think they're super cool. I remember when it was an 8th edition I rolled in at first uh, when I really got back into uh, Warhammer uh, tabletop. I, I I saw them. I was like, man, this is really cool. Fuck yeah. Eldari are getting something uh, to like push their their story forward and they they look cool uh, I think they have an interesting uh, interesting stories their um, their goal is interesting and then it just goes you we only got three fucking models <laughs> they got three models two uh, two <coughs> books which is I guess good for g- good rate actually but for <laughs> Xeno species but uh, faction. And then their story just got, yeah, no, the last uh, sword is in Slanesh's temple, so it's just lost. Yeah, and she's good. Good luck. Have fun. <laughs> Slanesh is dangling in front of her crotch. The fucking Eldar equivalent of it's in fucking Trazen's gallery. You're not getting it back. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a uh, oh my god, I a plot line that went nowhere. That that managed to go nowhere in its own books too. There was a uh, yeah. Who, who can forget the keeper of secrets that licked a bunch of them to death? <laughs> uh, and then when they finally killed it, it went. Actually, I was hiding my true power all along because apparently, <clears throat> I Games Workshop writers have recently discovered Dragon Ball Z, and it's all the rage for them right now. <laughs> I was just testing you. This is not my true power. Hey, and you know who? And you know who fucking wrote that book? Fucking Gav Thorpe. <laughs> You know, for someone who regularly is, like, the chosen author to write Eldar books, they gotta get someone else to write Eldar books. He doesn't seem to like them. <laughs> and he's doing he's doing the new Votan book, so I can't wait for him to fuck up the Votan. <laughs> uh, well... Well, we were in uh, in England, uh, Nottingham. We were discussing this because that's when the news uh, came out of the uh, Votan book, and... Um, Speaking of vote towns, I was gonna put this on uh, that on the list as well. Of course, but that story hasn't even started yet, so it's <laughs> nor will it ever finish. <laughs> but um, I, I think I think Gethorp can do good. Uh, I think the, the uh, Inari books are actually generally pretty well liked. But I mean, what what's what's the saying? You put enough monkeys in a room with a typewriter, they're about to ma- they're bound to make Shakespeare at one point. <laughs> <laughs> sooner or later and every now and then you know black library does make some shakespeare and then they make the yanari trilogy that doesn't get to the trilogy part <laughs> just axed in the second book yeah that's fucking rough yeah dude every everything about the yanari storyline goes absolutely nowhere mm-hmm. like it like it's just straight up a dead end like Eldred gets banished from Ulthway for his little summoning ritual. He shows up anyways. Yeah. It has no effect. <laughs> he doesn't care. <laughs> he got Yeah. He got a he got a fucking restraining order and he was like, I'm built different. <laughs> bitch, I'm fucking Hugo weaving in space. You're gonna listen to me, bit motherfucker. <laughs> the Yunari storyline is such a going nowhere plotline, it make it has it affects other people's storylines. <laughs> Yvrain turned a bunch of thousand sons into people again, and then that's gone nowhere. Yeah. We're, we're, we're turning Araman's storyline into a dead end. It, it's such a dead end of narrative. <laughs> well, that's what sucks, right? Because it had so much potential. Like, the, the idea of, like, that really unified uh, uh, force, I think, is really cool. That's, like, I actually got inspired by the Unari uh, just because of that for my kill team. Uh, they're they're, they're these they're this this Corsair group that's just a bunch of different uh, uh, dudes. I mean that's what it is normally. But like I decided, hey, I also want to include uh, Harlequin. So at some point, I'm also gonna kit bash uh, Unari, like actual Unari, and uh, All three of them. But yeah, no, it's unfortunately uh, they decided that that plotline wasn't worth uh, go going forward with, mm-hmm. which which really sucks. Maybe if maybe if the books didn't treat them like absolute jobbers, and also they finished the books, 
and also didn't release the first Loyalist Primark returning at the same time they did that. <laughs> so, like, can, 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 you, can you, like, at least pretend you didn't want the Eldar storyline to not happen? Just just, pre- just give me the illusion you care about them. I know you don't, James. I know you don't. <laughs> but pretend to care about them. Please, I'll give you money if you just act like you care about the Eldar. But, in lieu of that... In, part, in the second part of this is how exactly would we as fans uh, of of these subjects try and fix what Games Workshop has so vehemently eviscerated mm. in terms of the Unari plotline? I think you could keep things roughly similar, but just tweak them a bit. Like, you know, that the crone sword mm-hmm. doesn't need to be dangled between Slanesh's crotch. You can... <laughs> <laughs> that 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 is the last crone sword. It's Slanesh's sword. <laughs> yeah, no, it it's the one you need. It's like you could have it be like you know an important keeper of secrets, or it's in like you know it's on the crone worlds because it's a crone sword. You know something like that. Yeah, on on top of that, like these crone swords are supposed to be something that Slanesh doesn't like, right? Why would Slanesh keep one in their fucking you know realm of? Whatever the fuck Slanesh is supposed to represent. Ooh, I have the answer for that. It's because Games Workshop didn't want to finish the story. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, that's that's always the answer. <laughs> but I don't like that answer. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But I think it comes down to uh, a couple of things. I think from like a writing perspective, it's a way too, uh, unfortunately, way too lofty of a goal. You know, kill Slanesh uh, and uh, um, uh, re, uh, re... What's the word? English isn't my first language. Uh, uh, revive uh, the 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 uh, Eldar God of the Dead, whatever his name is. Inari. Yeah. Or Inead, yeah. Inead. It's... Uh, <sighs> I think it would have needed somehow to be scaled down, which I think unfortunately is hard for that t- just that type of faction. But th- that's what you could do, for example, is doing what the salamanders do with like trying to find the relics of Vulcan is not having all of them. I mean, the the, the fact is the fact that they're like, oh, we have all the crone swords except for one is like really infuriating in of itself. Because it's like, yeah. then they have no other goal to try and achieve. Cue, cue in the fucking gif of Charlie from Smiley Friends going, We were right there! <laughs> it's like, you, they, they wrote the storyline so that it's like, they're the only other options left are now endgame. Yeah, exactly. And, the, and that's the main issue. Uh, it's it's like, oh, if they're gonna do a end times thingamabob like sure maybe they're like hey the Unari are still a thing right but um yeah but that's the big that's the big issue with this entire like thing conceptually is that they will never end Warhammer 40k because it is their prized hog (laughs) yeah no that is (laughs) That is that is the cow whose milk just keeps on giving, <laughs> and that that is probably most likely why they keep leaving storylines unfinished, so people just wait for years for them to never be finished. Much much like in reference to my beloved Night Lord's omnibus. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it, it, and it's not even. It, 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 that's almost worse because we have an ending to the omnibus. We actually got our trilogy, unlike the poor Eldar fuckers. <laughs> Man. But it leads to such a bigger story plot point for the Eighth Legion in its whole. And I love ABD, but he needs to stop acting like his characters are fucking just fan fiction and finish the fucking plot line. <laughs> <laughs> because he puts up Decimus, the prophet of the Eighth Legion, to reunite the to reunite the Night Lords, and then he posts on Reddit, "I don't want to like move any real. I don't want to make any big waves in the setting. You know, I just want to let these characters st- like stop. You're ABD. You are like the best author of <laughs> the entire Black Library. You need to stop acting like you're just writing a few short stories, motherfucker." <laughs> I desperately want an end, uh, an ending or continuation of Decimus's story. Let him become like the prophet and lead the Eighth Legion. Fuck the Painted Count. Fuck Chaos Night 
swords, for God's sakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, I, I think that's a really interesting, like, um, uh, so, sort of um, mirror to the El, uh, Inari, I think. Like, the, the o- only other thing I think they could do is try and do just that. Like, unify the... Uh, the, the different factions of the Eldars. And, uh, yeah, well, they, they tried that almost in the Yanari books because they had fucking Vect actually coordinate with Eldrad yeah. for once. And it went absolutely fucking nowhere, like all it said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then Vect just goes back to being, you know, the worst fucking, per- th- the worst fucking person in the universe. We we got a few like sidelines of oh, but some some of the Archons like you know the Archons of the Dark Eldar like they're they're not as sure about Vect. He was a little bit embarrassed, and then functionally, no, he's still Vect. He's still the only person in Kamara that matters. It's like you, no one's even going to pretend to try and revolt. Just 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 throw some just throw some feelers out. Just you know, just sound like sound like a greeting card. <laughs> well, I mean, he did do that whole thing where he, you know, devised a plot so convoluted to kill all the non-loyal Archons. He he did, but also it's like not everyone showed up. Like, you tell me every Archon in Kamara was there. <laughs> everyone. Like, you know, at least like that Malice lady wasn't. It, it is. It is for GW. That, that is 100% a Warhammer thing. That all your enemies show up to your funeral. <laughs> he's not a single one of them just goes, nah, nah, that fucker, he's, he, he planned something. I don't fucking trust him, <clears throat> even if he's fucking dead. Not a single one of them went, right, we have caveat-free resurrection technology we use all the time. What if he's using that? Not one of them thought that, considered that. <laughs> And then, then Vec pops up. He's like, "Right, we can self revive." Ah! <laughs> brilliant writing. Bri- brilliant writing. The clowns are there also for some unknown reason. Oh, and then and and then you had the in, in uh, with the Dark Elder. You have the clown lady that's in fucking Kamara that Chia Chia Gorach or whatever the fucking laughing god is. Put his yeah. She's got her his heart. Huh? Yeah, she has the literal heart of a god. Inner, huh? That's a uh, Ma- lady malice. Is a uh, she's she like got into a duel of riddles with Kagarak in the webway because when you're fighting a clown god, it gets weird like that. Uh, and she won, and he gave her his heart, which she proceeded to jam into in place of her own heart. For I don't know what else are you gonna do with it? I guess <laughs> I, 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 I <laughs> edge reasons. I guess. <laughs> Sometimes you get a clown god's heart. Sometimes you shove it right in the fucking heart hole. It's an important part of a, of a human being's life cycle, but uh, I it's gone nowhere. That that that's meant nothing. Reasons to shove the crystal heart into my own chest. I have it. It's right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I will. It's uh, um. But uh, it, like going back to uh, that, like uh, the uh, Inari, like I think the the idea itself of them like trying to uh, regroup all of the Eldari is a super interesting one. It's it's like I feel like that's like just lofty enough, but not l- too lofty that it could be an interesting like uh, continuation of their plot. Like as as they're like, oh shit, the fucking sword is stuck in uh, palace of uh, Slanesh, so uh, fuck, alright, let's just do plan B. And uh, what, uh, One thing I thought of, uh, though, is a bit of a plot hole with how GW used to do their dating system. Is uh, You know how before, you know, the Great Rift and all that all that stuff, it was it was just M, M41999? Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you look at what happens in that year, I think you'll notice, like, Cato Sicarius is in four different places in the galaxy that aren't anywhere near each other all at once. <laughs> uh, I think the Blood Angels were also certainly getting around. No, 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 you don't understand. It's warp shenanigans. It's it's built into the lore. Fucking... <laughs> yeah, I was, I was just say, I, I know they have their built-in, you know, cop-out mechanism, which, to be fair, I will, I'll, I'll give them some credit. Which one? There's so many. <clears throat> I, yeah, god damn it. They're somewhat clever for doing that, but you can only do that so many times until it's like, you know, I was reading these Warhammer books, and they all say M1... Or M41999. And I don't think anyone here can teleport naturally like this. But they seem to be all over the place. (laughs) Which 
is, is just a fun little plot hole with G- old GW's like just adamant refusal to move the setting forward an inch <laughs> is uh just everywhere. They were everywhere. People were everywhere. I wouldn't be surprised if Gilliman was moving, just teleporting in his coffin all over the galaxy. <laughs> It turns out you can do a lot in a year when you have the entire fucking universe to go across. Yeah. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't it take for the, it takes them fucking years to travel between planets, actually. Yeah, like, warp travel is quick, but, like, if you're going from one end of the galaxy to the other, it's not, like, a, a weekend trip. No. But, uh, don't tell that, like, <laughs> don't, don't tell that to anyone. Don't tell that to the Auburn authors. <laughs> Uh, a light uh, little uh, <laughs> car drive through the fucking galactic core to the <laughs> other side. A, a, a little jaunt around the gal- the Milky Way, you know? <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's just a quick little car ride, guys. Come on. 20-minute adventure. In and out. <laughs> Ka- Kato Sakarius' car ride through the fucking y- Imperium. <laughs> Uh, is this the like equivalent of uh, in Europe you can drive four hours and drive through eight countries, but if you drive four hours in Texas, you're still in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> you're still in Texas. You're still in fucking Texas. Yeah, dude, I can, I can drive four hours in Illinois and not leave Illinois, depending on which direction I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> it's a prison, honestly. <laughs> it's a- I, I can't get the fuck out of California. It's a I'm trapped. <laughs> Every direction I go, four hours. I'm still in fucking California. It's take it's taken me four year five or three years, almost four of post college savings to be able to finally scoot my way slightly over the border of Illinois, and I'm not even there yet. <laughs> <laughs> another another plot I think needs to be finished or at least move forward is what the fuck was up with the dark king oh yeah uh that's a good one rewrite heresy for drama's sake is it a good rewrite no (laughs) is it there yes that's the whole i think oh we have to try and give the emperor a higher motive in order like oh it's all in his uh his grand master plan you know uh and they're like Fuck, we're, fuck dude, we're, we're in the last fucking book series now, the, the last ten books or something. We, we need to give him a reason now. We haven't developed him at all. Fuck, what do we do? <laughs> yeah, but but like, all, all we get is of the Dark King is Vulcan, the, the warp screamed. Like, it, like, the warp literally screamed at Vulcan, like, the Dark King rises, right? Mm-hmm. And, and then we get like other little teasers like Malkador talking with Vulcan and they're like, oh, maybe it's Conrad Kurz because he called himself the Dark King. And then they go, no, he probably just had a psychic connection with the warp. He took like a, that's that first off. That's just terrible writing. <laughs> and, and second off, like what is the Dark King supposed to be? I know they're trying to talk about him like he's the fifth chaos god. But, like, why do we need another Chaos God? We haven't dealt with a single other Chaos God since. Well, as I understand it, it is either Horus wins and becomes the fifth Chaos God, which is, uh, like, him uh, dis- killing, like, destroying all life in the galaxy. And, uh, uh, you know, that's uh, the, the, the real end time setting where uh, the Chaos Gods lose. And then there is the other option of um the emperor uh die being killed and his uh psychic powers manifesting as the dark king the dark king yeah but like there's also like it's teased that bellacor or vashtor might become him as well mm. and it's not very good in the way that they try and like honestly i i, I wouldn't mind like the concept of with a quote unquote dark king being a thing if they flesh it out to something that fucking everyone was scared of, even the warp gods. Yeah. You know? Like this like this third like not third party, at this point it's like the fucking eighth party. Um, but like this outside party that is warp related, like Malau, you know? Like some chaotic force of just ca- pure chaos that's not e- that has no goal other than to just destroy everything. Well, if I am to speculate, uh, I think the dark, like if I'm to get a bit meta about this, uh, I think the gar- dark, uh, the dark king, the dark king, dark, 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 dark. <laughs> was, 
you know, very much just uh, shoved in there in the last minute in the Siege of Terra series because uh, because just of where they want to develop the story in the 40k setting. As you said, uh, it's implied that Vashtor and Bellacor also want to become uh, the Dark King, mm. and I, f- I think that's just them trying to connect the two things. Uh, so, as where I've basically, my theory about where the story of 40k is going is that we're moving towards a sort of uh, Age of Hero uh, setting, I've said this before, mm-hmm. where, you know, it's prim- the Primarchs are back, the, like, demigods are walking the galaxy again. Uh, all of these, like, greater than life characters will come back to the 40k setting and in some turn of events there's going to be this uh, every uh, everyone or uh, or at least the most powerful uh, entities are going to try and achieve uh like apotheosis apotheosis trying to become the dark king i know exactly what they're using that guy for mm-hmm. they don't want to get rid of the big four so they're creating alternative antagonists for them to defeat and save the day. Mm. And that's what the Dark King is going to be used for. It's going to be just a jobber villain that <laughs> they could use as a fucking Saturday morning cartoon villain to say, look, here's an enemy that the Primarchs can fight and not fuck with the setting as a whole because you can't kill a Chaos God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But this is some other guy for now. He's not a Chaos God yet. We can kill him all we want. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, Chaos Gods just aren't intrinsically linked to reality, and you can't just defeat them, you know? Yeah. Hmm. It's also, within, maybe in the future, they can do something cool with it, kind of like that Age of Heroes thing, you Moots. Hmm. But, like, within the confines of the Horus Heresy, it's also a plot that can inherently not go anywhere, because we know how it ends. We know how the Horus Heresy ends. We can see, we, Gilliman talked to the Emperor, didn't seem like the Dark King. If he did, then I, if he did, if he was the Dark King at, by the time Gilliman reached him, then everyone was way overreacting about how bad it was going to be. Oh, no, no, you, you you see, you see, it's because he has to die first, so he's stuck on the throne, so he can't ascend. I and- see, and that's and that's why we spent, like, half the Siege of Terra book series talking about the Dark King that we know is, is not going anywhere, because <laughs> we know how the Horse Heresy ends, and as much as GW has, has dicked around with it, you can't change the big moment of Emperor almost dead on chair mm. <laughs> <laughs> almost dead on chair look you, you can change a lot of things you can make a whole lot of the primarchs real stupid <laughs> emperor's got to go on chair that's got, you can't you can't mess with that one gw <laughs> no no you certainly can't listen you're we're crippling the golden bastard one way or the other <laughs> <laughs> this man is losing his legs no matter what Get in the fucking chair right now. <laughs> Just at, at, at the end of the Siege of Terra, they try and do a big rewrite where they fucking like, oh no, the Emperor actually wins, but then Dorn steps and goes, the timeline must remain intact. And fucking <laughs> just like punches the Emperor in the back of the spine. <laughs> Just picks him up and fucking banes him, you know, brings him. (laughs) (laughs) This must not, this is not how it's supposed to be. And then he just hits him with a brick. (laughs) He just has a brick. He keeps a cinder block with him at all times. And just like, and walks out of the, like, because he he walks out by himself. He's like, oh no. Horus slew the emperor. <laughs> Who could have seen this coming? I must have turned him into the golden throne. Dorn, you're still holding the brick. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you keep that? And then, like uh, ten thousand years later, it's a relic in the fucking imperium, in the phalanx. It's just a brick with like the, they they say it's the blood of Horus. <laughs> I was gonna say somewhere lost on the vengeful spirit is like sho- like just shoved in behind the fucking that giant throne or something like uh, under the staircase is just a b- bloody brick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fucking Isk- Iskander Chaos is like looking around for like some materials to make that stupid sword. He like looks underneath the stairs and just like what the fuck is this? This this is just a red brick covered in blood. There's like no chaos. Cor- it's just a brick. <laughs> <laughs> 
Like, I know the vengeful spirit was kind of falling apart, but not that bad. <laughs> what if a... Uh, he goes to Abaddon. He's like, hey, Abaddon, check this shit out. He just, like, throws the brick at him. <laughs> and it brings him, too. <laughs> He's like, fuck, I thought you dodge. <laughs> I'm in Terminator armor. I can't dodge anything. Why would you throw a brick at me? <laughs> so speaking of not dodging because of your armor, what if the Horus Heresy... You know, it wraps up nice and easy. Dorden doesn't brain the Emperor. Horus is dead. <laughs> but then from the depths of the vengeful spirit, from the warp itself, the Emperor hears a faint voice shouting, Lore of Metal. <laughs> and then he gets drowned in just lead bricks. <laughs> 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 this kilts wild ride, baby. <laughs> I am supreme! Brains the Emperor. <laughs> Turns his armor to lead. It's, it's Balthasar Gelt Time Cop. Balthasar Gelt Time Cop! Comes in flying into the Bridge of the Vengeful Spirit on a fucking gyrocopter, throwing fucking lead bricks down. <laughs> and then he steals Biggie's wallet and leaves. <laughs> Oh, the fucking joke keeps on giving. It's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually how Sanguinius died during the battle between Horus. <laughs> <laughs> Horus didn't strike him down. Balthazar Gelt came flying in and brained the angel. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Balthazar Gelt is the Dark King. Holy shit. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy shit. It makes sense. <laughs> He's going to ascend to be good. <laughs> the, the warp will be nothing but me precious metals for all time going forward. <laughs> you know what? I know exactly how I'd finish the Yanari story. <laughs> oh boy. They finally, they f with all their effort, they unite the Eldar, break into Slanesh's palace, and as soon as, as right when they reach for the fucking last crone sword, Balthazar Gelt appears, turning it to lead. <laughs> <laughs> And then bricks fuck in your brain. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 were, they were really going to stop with all the stupid, it was all warp travel shenanigans that made the timeline wrong. Just have, just use guilt as something to beat things up you don't like. <laughs> that is, the, that is the, the true bravery that the Black Library refuses to go towards. <laughs> just have guilt be the source of all of your fuck ups. What a, how, come, how come you moved the squats way back in second edition? Gelt did it. Gelt fucking did it. Brained every one of the tiny fuckers. How come they're back? He undid the spell. <laughs> he fucking goes to the Vengeful Spirit, bricks fucking Sanguinius, then snap back to fucking Age of Sigmar, where, like, Gelt is fucking hanging out. He's a st Stormcast Gelt now. Yeah, Stormcast Gelt's hanging out with fucking Stormcast Carl Franz, and he has a cloak of feathers, and he's just like, where'd you get that? He's just like, you would not believe the things I had to do, but they're nice feathers. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a very long day. You, you would not believe it. L listen, you'd be surprised at how much you can get done in a year when you have to go across the Milky Way. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like this year is like 30 years. M41999 really dragged on. <laughs> I met this guy called Kato Sicarius four times. <laughs> Completely different spots each time. And weird thing is, it was the same day. <laughs> I fucking, I fucking realized something. You know who else in 40k has a golden uh, mask? The fucking Sanguinor. Oh god, what if one of these gelt? <laughs> no, you know what? <laughs> Sanguinor is just gelt. <laughs> That's why he never takes it off. <laughs> So keep the mask I can see it now. The Blood Angels are in their dire hour. They're like begging for Sanguinis to manifest and bring them to like victory. Out of the sky, they see a bolt of golden lightning and they see him Sanguinor. But as he descends, he just goes, I am supreme. <laughs> <laughs> Molten metal rains from the sky and fucking crushes Dante's skull with a Fucking cinder block. 
I will not rest until every masked character in 40K is revealed to secretly be killed. <laughs> he brains Dante. Dante removes his mask, revealing another golden mask. It's Malthazar Gelt again! <laughs> <laughs> the entire Sanguinary Guard. It's all Gelt. <laughs> it's warp shenanigans. Who cares about the end times? We're living in the Gelt times. <laughs> <laughs> I want to, you know what? F- fuck, fuck fixing GW. N- you know what? We are fixing GW's mistakes. For the Vashtor book where he fucking laid siege to the rock, instead of it being Pelicor that stopped him, it was Gelt. <laughs> He just, he's a, he is an accurate 19th century cannon. He just shoots in Vashtor's face like it's a Tom and Jerry skit. <laughs> <laughs> Fires a fucking solid gold cannonball that turns to lead. None of it needs to happen, but it should. <laughs> <laughs> Dying. <laughs> oh, I'm actually crying. <laughs> 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 I don't I, I have no other wishes other than to be live in the guilt times. <laughs> Please. Please. They were the best of times, they were the worst of times. It was the guilt times. This is the cowardice. This is cowardice on GW's part. <laughs> Give the people what they want. Just make it an April Fool's book or something. 300 pages long and the punchline of every chapter was and then it was guilt the whole time. <laughs> You know, you know what? Fuck it. More people in the server. Stop. Stop. Start making sanguinary gar- guard in Dante's Balthazar Gelt. I demand it. <laughs> <laughs> I will not rest until ev- I see every single ca- like masked character in 40k represented as Balthazar Gelt. <laughs> <laughs> they look. They look the exact same. There's just an aura of smugness coming off of the model. <laughs> <laughs> It literally, it, it is no different than their base model. It's just, you know, they're smi- smiling like a fucker under there. <laughs> just arm them with nothing but cinder blocks. You know what? So, someone, if if you, if you're brave enough to run the sanguinary guard in your army and kit bash them holding all cinder blocks, I will guarantee it. You will be on models of the week or whatever the fuck we call it. Get a, grab like a Lego wallet. And then just glue it to the side of the model, just paint other factions' logos on it. Yeah, just give me like a sang- like a sanguinary. Co- no, you take the sanguinor model, right? You take off its like take off the sword in the cup and replace it with a wallet in a cinder block, and and on the ground is like the like Gilliman's body. <laughs> <laughs> he stole fucking kill him and swallow it flies <laughs> off oh, they're, they're all reviving Gilliman <laughs> fucking <laughs> blinding holy light as the the 13th son is revived and then suddenly out of left field <laughs> I am supreme <laughs> he claps his hands and then it's over <laughs> During that battle when Gilliman awoke, <laughs> it just a single fucking brick goes flying across the room. Fucking hits your brain. Doesn't even go for Gilliman. He <laughs> <laughs> just goes, it's okay, I saved you from a shitty <laughs> duology. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, here to, I'm here to save the Eldar from a horrible storyline. Don't worry, G-Man, I saved the Eldar and I saved you from a shitty fan shipping. All right, my work here is done. I am supreme. Claps his hands, golden light, he's gone. And so is Gilman's wallet. <laughs> Gilman's like, wait, son of a bitch. <laughs> you know the Team Fortress 2 trailers? I'm picturing Gelt. This man can steal 400,000 wallets in 12 seconds. <laughs> oh, I love crackhead Gelt. <laughs> Crackhead Gelt <laughs> just steals copper wire and fucking catalytic converters. <laughs> God, if if that guy ever got to like the realms of the car, uh, the Caradon overlords, that man is going to have a fucking seizure. <laughs> it's over for them. <laughs>
total factional defeat. <laughs> he's, he just starts fucking foaming at the mouth, seeing all the copper pipes. He's just like... <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another Stars and Anonymous podcast where we milk the gelt joke. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's such a fertile cow. <laughs> <laughs> Much like GW, and this is our Warhammer 40,000, the Balthazar Kelt joke. (laughs) (laughs) It's good for at least two podcasts. It's it's when it breaches into the third that it's too much. (laughs) I guarantee you it's going to breach into the third. Much like Kelt is inevitably going to breach into the fucking Imperial Palace. P- people think that it was when Cadia exploded that the Eye of Terror became, like, it split the galaxy in two. But that was actually when Balthasar Gelt <laughs> punched his way through the multiverse to k- 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 go into the 40, 40k universe. <laughs> <laughs> it was the aftershock of him breaching the reality. <laughs> I'm getting my head is spinning, guys. <laughs> Abaddon, Abaddon didn't throw the Blackstone Fortress into Cadia. Gelt just simply seized control <laughs> and drove it right into the goddamn planet. <laughs> he seized control. <laughs> he, he's God struck his driver on his busiest road. <laughs> Abaddon, Abaddon went to order all those ships to like ram it into the planet that he saw was already going down on its own. <laughs> He just uh, he just sees the Black Star Fortress and Katie just goes, This looks like a job for me. <laughs> <laughs> Cue the fucking Slim Shady music video, but with about the Zarkouts. <laughs> I was imagining the Helldivers drop theme. <laughs> <laughs> Literally never played the game, so I don't know. I have better things to do with my time, like talk about Balthazar Gelt. Talk, yeah, talk about Gelt. <laughs> the thinking man's pastime. <laughs> <laughs> this this is my personal Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> what were you even talking about originally? I'm not kidding, Air. <laughs> <laughs> I had two other things to bring up, but I don't. <laughs> but I don't know what we were talking about. Fuck. <laughs> I know we've been talking about Gelt for about fifteen minutes now. <laughs> Honestly, Black Library needs to hire us. You know, we're, we'll get the fucking ball moving. Are we gonna? Are we... Yeah, clearly, clearly. Are we gonna write good books? No, they'll be funny. <laughs> Good, but like neither does Gav Thorpe, you know. So the bar's pretty low. Which <laughs> <laughs> we, we should we should all write an application to Games Workshop. Yes. <laughs> and all the qualifications are: can we really be worse than what you have now? <laughs> That's all we write for, like our our history. Anything. Qualification: we're not Gav Thorpe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually funny. <laughs> Listen, I, listen I, I talk shit about your company on a YouTube channel. That's my qualification. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I make fun of your business decisions. Please hire me. <laughs> l- l- look. <laughs> Clearly we can be trusted. L- look, my, my, fucking, <laughs> my fucking application to the Black Library is going to be just a piece of paper that says, I am supreme. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as they open it up, a fucking cinder block's flying through the goddamn window. It's like that JoJo stand in part four. <laughs> the gun's gonna come out. That's what I was thinking as well. I was like, they open the paper and a brick flies out from the paper and hits them in the face. <laughs> Gyroco- you hear the sounds of a gyrocopter in the distance, followed by laughter. Welcome to Warhammer World! <laughs> The statue in front of Warhammer World used to be gold until Gelt showed up. <laughs> until Gelt showed rocked up. Now it's the whatever it is. <laughs> now, it's, now it's fucking plaster. Right. Where, where the fuck were we? I, some, something Dark King, I think. <laughs> oh, right. Yes. The fuck. Estalia. <laughs> so, okay. So, oh my God. I'm, I'm trying to. Okay. Composing myself. Finding my center. All right. 
<laughs> My center is Balthazar Gelt. <laughs> Fuck off. Alone under heaven and earth, I am the golden one. <laughs> Cue the comments of this podcast has fallen off. <laughs> oh, please, those come in the first second. <laughs> <laughs> the video's <laughs> 30 seconds and only three likes, you fell off. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. Oh, uh, if, if you're a true fan of the podcast, put in I am supreme in the comments. All caps. <laughs> Yeah, if you got this far, start, start, live chat, start writing, I am supreme. Hashtag guilt maxing. <laughs> guilt maxing. I'm, st- I'm straight up guilting it. By it, I'm... <laughs> I mean, our about this. Our... <laughs> straight up guilting it. <laughs> <laughs> back on topic boys back on topic Woo. I do have something that I promise it isn't guilt related <laughs> please tell us what is it so uh do you, you, you ever hear about the time the Eldar conquered the Eye of Terror <laughs> no no I haven't the, uh, the Eye of Terror campaign GW did the uh, the first iteration of the 13th Black Crusade it was uh Abaddon completely failed and <laughs> not only like a uh, yeah, I believe, because it was one of those things, it was like one of the those campaigns that was based off of tabletop matches for the narrative result, but it actually included Battlefleet Gothic. So funny enough, like the, you know, Chaos Space Marines won pretty decisively on the ground. They got curb stomped in space. So the narrative they came up with was, yeah, you know, the Black Legion took over a whole lot of planets, and then they got bombed. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if if I remember correctly, <laughs> the Eldar were off in the corner, just sweeping through the Crone worlds, retaking their home planets. <laughs> which uh, which was a combination of not only did Chaos lose because, good job, you took the planet. I'm gonna blow up the planet now. <laughs> Chaos was losing the Eye of Terror <laughs> to the Eldar. <laughs> so, uh, El- Eldrad-, Eldrad also died. And by died, what? I mean, like, fell into Slanesh's mouth. Ooh. What the fuck? He was in a Blackstone Fortress, and then he was like, oh, there's a dark presence here. But then Gelt was driving it. <laughs> <laughs> right into Slanesh's mouth. <laughs> I am supreme, he yells. <laughs> One hand on the steering wheel, fucking alcohol in the other. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a bottle of Jack Daniels in the other. <laughs> Glasses, fucking Eldrad <laughs> throws him out the window into Slamesh's gaping maw. I mean, I I see why they decided not to um, move on with that th- that plot line. To be honest, <laughs> that's. Th- I, I think I think between that and Storm of Chaos, GW eventually learned we can't have our r- setting defining events dictated by the tabletop because we're going to lose control immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, clearly we we know we can see in like fan fiction what happens whenever uh, or or any like community driven thing what happens when uh, the community gets uh, gets control of the narrative, right? Gets involved, <laughs> gets involved a little bit. Uh, we get Balthasar and Gelt as the Dark King and the fucking <laughs> Sanguinor. <laughs> but like, yeah, it's a uh, uh, <laughs> Any masked character, really? But yeah, it's uh, it's it seems fair enough. I I'd say I'm not too mad about that, honestly. <laughs> it's, it's something, it's like... Yeah, <clears throat> it was just a a neat little timeline that we almost went down before James said no, no, that's not. You guys are having too much fun right now. <laughs> <laughs> that looked almost like an Eldar W. We're going to bring in this other character. He's called the Dark King. And then we're going to bring in Vashtor. You know, he's a cool guy. He's a, he's like a, a demon machine. Right after we release the fucking Void Dragon and do nothing with it. Oh my god, I didn't even think of that. 
That's another one, yeah. What the fuck? I never put two and two together on that. Or or the fucking Silent King for that matter. He, he's just he's just stuck now. Fucking this is what this is what happens when you introduce these fucking characters, unfortunately. I mean like again, I think it's all if I had to guess, if I had to give GW some kind of credit again, I'd say that this is just all the setup, years, years worth of setup to uh to move towards that It's been going bigger age of heroes sort of narrative but it's been going on since the fucking 60s no 80s moods like jesus is it? well i well i mean i i I'd, I'd say it's really started with eighth edition the, the what, what i'm talking about here right the the finally like uh kicking the uh, the behind of uh, Warhammer 40k and to, into like a bit of an overdrive to like move things forward. It's a uh, god though. That's so. They brought they made a like demi chaos god of machinery and he went to go bother the dark angels. <laughs> Naturally, and then Bellacor shows up for no reason. I that Bellacor's here. I I don't know. They, <laughs> They had him do things in AOS. Maybe they felt obligated for to have him show up in 40k. Hey, hey look, hey, look, when it's Bellacor, the guy from AOS, see? You know, the guy who does things in fantasy, but is only here because we're obligated to have him here in 40k. <laughs> we, we released his model, but we realized we didn't give him any fucking thing to do. So, he, here's his thing to do. He's actually fucking with Vashtor. Because apparently, no chaos demon can ever be on the same page as another one. Yeah, I fucking guess. I mean, I'm starting to notice a trend here, right? Which is GW bringing back these larger-than-life characters uh, with super lofty big goals. They have a, a bit of lore to explain what it is they're up to, what they have been up to, and then what they're, they plan on doing. And then they just go, "We'll pick that up. At, we'll pick that up another time." <laughs> I wouldn't even say that ba- Bellacor or Vestor are larger than life. They don't really do anything. Well, I mean, as we uh, as we previously established, I mean, the the they are. I mean, Vashtor himself is trying. On, to on top be- of that, if they're bringing characters back, Vashtor is a new addition, a completely new addition. He he literally did not exist before they released his model, mm. and, and it's reveal. By the way, that that's something that that I think is dumb is that Vashtor is a fucking arms dealer to the Chaos Gods. <laughs> Not a fan. <laughs> so it, it is stated in his little fucking codex part. The Forge of Souls. None of the Chaos Gods want to get on Vashtor's bad side because they were worried that he'll start arming their enemies with more weapons. And it's like, why do you care? You're a force of fucking nature. <laughs> who, 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 you're you're a literal god. Why do you give a fuck? <laughs> But he, he's he's something even mightier, the force of Lockheed Martin's military. <laughs> that is what, yeah, Bash, Bashtor is the fucking primary investor in fucking Blackrock. <laughs> <laughs> Bashtor isn't the god of machines, he's the god of capitalism. <laughs> Fuck, holy shit. If, if they piss off Bashtor, he's going to reintroduce the F-22 to the 42nd millennium, or whatever we're on now. <laughs> Hey, that's a cool thousand yard relic. Check this shit out. Fucking QF22 Raptors. <laughs> this was made when people understood weaponry. <laughs> its cross section is so minimal that it reads a fucking B on radar, Gilliman. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand. This is gonna make a really, really autistic subset of your hobby really excited. <laughs> listen, listen. I'm the subset. It's I'm me. the subset. I'm autistic, Bellacor. The F-22 kicks the shit out of the fucking Russian S- uh, SRU-7 or whatever the fuck it's called, all right? <laughs> Vashtor is just a huge fucking... <laughs> <laughs> uh, fucking weapon nerd. That makes sense. The Mark 19 automatic grenade launcher, Bellacore. This shit fucking slings 40 millimeter grenades like they're fucking softballs. Ugh. <laughs> Why is Vashtor turning into like Rick? <laughs> <laughs> Bellacore, yeah, we gotta. Bellacore! <laughs> <laughs> we gotta go on adventure! <laughs> Bellacore, get the fuck out of my way! I'm gonna kill you! 
we 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 got to bother the dark angel's belly. Belly. <laughs> belly. Ben, ben, get in the fucking car. <laughs> Dude, he could even just say Morty if he's talking to Mortarian. Mort- Morty, Morty, I have, I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he breaks in. Yeah, fuck it. He breaks into fucking Nurgle's manor, gets fucking Mortarian out of the fucking no no basement, and just like, Morty, Morty, get in the fucking car, Morty. We gotta go fuck with the Dark Angels. I need, I, I have demon engines, Morty. Or what they got? What, what, are, what are they called? Soul grind, Morty, I have soul grinders for you. <laughs> Morty, I have soul grinders. Give, 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 give me more Lockheed Martin stock. <laughs> more, more, the, the governments of are fucking cowards. We're already tax evasion an obligation. The emperor is a fucking fed. <laughs> God damn! Now I can't. Out, now, now I'm not gonna be able to think about Vastor without thinking about him being really weirdly into 21st century arms development. <laughs> Takes a fucking fat hit from a vape pen. <laughs> <laughs> if Ashtor if Ashtor was human, he'd definitely have a fucking top knot. <laughs> I mean, he has all those cords in the back of his head. You know, it's uh, he just needs to put them together. He, 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 he could he could rework one, make it a top <laughs> knot. Exactly. All right, look. Abaddon's got look, one. artists of the server, give me hipster Vashtor that's really into fucking twenty first century weaponry. <laughs> Yes, with with Gelt looming behind him, with Gelt like yeah, dragging the cinder blocks. Sh- fucking shocking, a fucking brick at the back of his head. Can, can we can we get you know that that image of you know Venom dunking on Spider Man? Can we get that with Gelt and I and anyone from Forty K? At anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, a fucking Gilliman, Abaddon, fucking Megatron. I don't care. <laughs> Gilt is just a f- Gilt is just a force of nature he doesn't care what universe you're from he'll get there and he'll fucking brain you with a brick <laughs> anyone with any kind of metal attached to them he can dunk at them <laughs> he is supreme it's his fucking it's his fucking catchphrase he doesn't say it for no reason <laughs> I did a. I, I did have one last thing I, I I prepared in terms of plot lines that go absolutely nowhere. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, a little bit different because they do kind of go somewhere. They all go to the same point of everyone died. <laughs> Ooh, okay. <laughs> the end times. Ah, oh, there mm. were quite. We'll give the the thing about the end times. Age of Sigmar reference. Mm. About the Zergel. You know the thing. He, he's he's back. He's in both of these settings. It's his home. He's in, he is indeed in both of these settings. But uh, the thing about the end times is it will have the most interesting plot hook or coolest moment you've ever read in Warhammer, surrounded by an infinite landfill of dog diarrhea. <laughs> Case in point, I let me just list off a couple. Uh, Nagash is back, and prior to AOS, Nagash coming back was like. Equivalent to, and then Corn stepped onto the mortal world. He came back. Where did that go? So is so is the power of Nagash. Such such is his power. <laughs> such is the power. And then uh, and then he came back, and then he, the Skaven nuked him. <laughs> and now he has to play nice. That could have been real interesting. You know, all the undead forcibly united under his banner. Where does it go? Or, world blew up. Uh, mm-hmm. Speaking of undead, Vlad is an Elector Count now. Of a nation that arguably hates the undead more than chaos, that be some. <laughs> what I thought I thought Vlad it wasn't even back yet. Oh, and the, he came back in the end times. He was instituted as an elector cow. Oh, this is this is still in the end times. I thought you were talking about Age of Sigmar as well. Oh yeah, this is just all the lovely plot points of the end times that uh, were really interesting hooks. Blow up, blow up Earth. Uh, yeah, Vlad's, the lad was an elector. He was even, like, arguing, like, sniping at Carl Franz. Like, you know, if you die, I'm the only elector left, baby. Uh, you know, that'd be real interesting. How does the Empire handle Vlad? He's here. Wait a second. Wait, wait. Vlad von Karstein, the Lord of Vampires and the strongest among them, somehow got into fucking the Empire of Man politics and was elected as one of their government officials. 
Elected is a strong word. It was more like it was like partway through the end times and a lot of people are dead and flat offered to hell. Uh. <laughs> and fucking Carl Franz took him up on the offer? <laughs> Carl was Carl was like, to say he was out of options by this point. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess it was either Vlad or fucking Manfred, so, you know. I, th- I think, if I remember correctly, what happened was they, they reinstituted Sylvania as an official province. It was like, all right, Vlad, here you go. <laughs> you can- Now start paying your fucking taxes, or else I'm fucking sending Gelt. <laughs> <laughs> Funny you mention that. Gelt was actually Vlad's apprentice for a bit. What the fuck? What? Yeah, he, lear- he learned necromancy to protect the big wall he magicked up. He can do that, by the way. He magicked up a wall across the entire Empire of Man's border. Yeah, right, so he did. Uh, yeah, I remember that. To keep it safe, Vlad taught him some necromancy, and then when the secret came out, Gelt kind of lost confidence in himself and worked under Vlad for a bit. Fuck. But, uh... Yeah, you know, Vlad being an elector, that could be some interesting plot hooks. How does the Empire handle that? Oh, we blow up the Empire. We handle it that way. Yeah, we we get rid of the plot before it become before we have to go to that. <laughs> yeah, all all of the elves are forcibly united under Malekith. They're it's just one elf faction anymore. I bet there's a lot. Why the fuck? Out of, why not like follow the fucking what's the other guy? What? Yeah, why why not follow him and not, why follow the weird the weird Darth Vader elf that has some very confusing relations with his mother? Well, in that instance, that was when Tyrion drew the sword of Cain and kind of just started swinging at whoever was closest to him. As you do, his reputation kind of went down the pooper. It's, that that is that speaks volumes of what he did when the the better option at that point was the weird Darth Malekith was Mal fucking Malekith. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, that that could be an interesting plot line. They were all holed up in the Wood Elf magical forest. Maybe that, what's going to happen? I bet some elves aren't happy with that. Oh, they all died. <laughs> uh, you know, them, they could look for a new home. Ulthuan sank and Nagarond was invaded by Korn. I, I would bet there'll be some interesting plot hooks coming. No, there's not. No, there's no interesting plot hooks coming. They're all dead. Uh, we killed everyone, which is a... Uh, we, we murdered them all. The Incarnates, it's like, oh, they're here, it's the age of the Incarnates, so the Winds of Magic now can replace the gods. Oh, they're dead. The orcs being unified and then uh, tr- uh, go, go, going to fight uh, Archaeon? Nope. <laughs> Setra- Every orc on the planet in the same spot, by the way. Setra yep. going, walking into the warp, go kick the Chaos God's ass. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. He's still in there as far as we fucking know. As far as I'm concerned, he's still there taking names. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get that gold body back. <laughs> it's uh yeah, it was uh it was a five book narrative event of and then everyone blew up. Thank you for spending money on these minis. <laughs> it was only five books? I thought it was more. I it was the first one was Nagash. I think the next one was Kane. Then it was like the Glotkin one, uh Thankwall, and then Archaeon. Hmm. Well, I think it's very endemic of the end times itself, just like how in concept it was all really good, like, or really good. It was interesting, uh, rather, and it just sort of went, eh. <laughs> I think the, the best, uh, like, 40k equivalent I can take, uh, I can make to that is the War of the Beast. Oh yeah, that's also something. With fucking uh, speaking, speaking of uh, <laughs> unfinished plot lines. Oh my god, the beasts! Apparently, there are multiple ones of them. You know, these gigantic motherfuckers. <laughs> they yeah, they blew up the planet they were on and killed them. Yeah, yeah. all of them. I thought yeah, no, yeah, it was all of them. What? I, f- I thought I, I, I. Oh well, that's a what? Oh, okay, I missed that. After after it took Vulcan, Kate, like sacrificing himself, all of the Imperial fit, everyone to get one. Uh, the other five just died. How'd you, how'd you get them? I blow up Earth, blow up the planet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? All right, I, I didn't know that. I, oh, I thought they were, like, somewhere else, and that was the whole mystery. Like, oh, oh, they're, they're like, somewhere in the universe, in the galaxy still. Yeah, they are. They're fucking particles now, floating through the void. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, it brings the question, why couldn't they have just done that beforehand? <laughs> yeah, plot. They... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we need, for some reason, uh, we need to have the High Lord's 
all kill each other. The the guy at the Assassinorum, he has to do it. How do we how do we get to this point? Uh big orc. I'm confused. I don't know how that was your decision. <laughs> I think Big Orc could have been his own plot point. I don't think we needed to involve the, the assassin stuff. Oh. Again, interesting in concept. Uh, uh, big Orc. B- big Orc, exactly. Sir, I'm not opposed to Big Orc. I like Big Orc. Grimgore, I love him. He's great. Mm-hmm. I don't know why Big Orc needed to be involved in the political drama, even if only like tangentially. <laughs> Listen, Big Orc's political side drama is his true passion, all right? <laughs> I mean, every, everyone's got hobbies, I guess. You know, far be it from me <laughs> to judge him for it. I imagine just dropping Grimgore into the fucking Game of Thrones universe. Just <laughs> <laughs> so you see what would happen. Everyone has their vices, you know. So orcs might be into political espionage. Other people are into stealing your catalytic converter, you know. Some others break into, like, an ancient god's, like, house to give their stepson some fucking demon engines. <laughs> we, all have our, we all have our plots we must follow. Some people are Iron Hands fans. I don't get it, but, you know, to each their own. <laughs> some people are Iron Hands fans. They just, you know, some people lack taste. <laughs> And, and, and agonize over the the one plot point that actually did have a, con- a like concise ending. I you know the whole thing about this is that in some small ways it kind of works, but GW has kind of moved away from this company attitude of using the setting as like a backdrop for like any adventures you want your own like your own armies to have, right? You kind of get what I'm saying. It's like, you know, you and your friends, you play a game, you make a narrative out of it, out of the 40K adventures. It's just that as they keep moving the story on, it kind of stops being, the setting stops being a backdrop of, you know, make your own stories in and turns into, you've given me 50 different stories in the past year, James. Can you finish one of them? (laughs) Just one. The Skyrim quest log is, I need to scroll through it to see everything now. Just knock one of them out. Even if it is, even if it is the equivalent of an Umbrella Academy season four ending, you know, just give me an ending. At least it's an ending. <laughs> At least it's an ending. It's a. Instead, they're doing the uh, the Walking Dead method, where it meanders on for thousands of years, well past the time this thing should have been put down. <laughs> we have a completely different cast, new motives. We have lost track of what the plot was originally about. Please end our suffering and just give us guilt in 40k. Please. <laughs> I, I think uh, part of it has become that, as you said, like 40k really used to be a backdrop uh, in a sense where you, you put your own story and all of that. But uh, as it's sort of moved on, it's it's sort of more become, you know, they've left. I feel like they've almost left some of, uh, a lot of these stories open specifically so that people can theorize you know like we had for example the uh, uh the lost and the purged primarchs they, they were there entirely so you could theorize about what happened to them so you could put in your own uh, legion and your own primarchs in that space right and, and, and i mean that's fine but like again they, they also go back and they they add little details and hints about these primarchs that kind of add just enough to where it doesn't really give you any room to think about it anymore. Mm. Well, well, precisely. And what, what I'm, what I was going to say is simply that they, they, they've sort of, it's sort of become almost their mondus operandi now where a lot of things in the 40 K setting is just open for interpretation, open for your own take and your own theories as to what could and could be. For example, my theory about uh, the, uh, how many times I've ever said this now? The the like the where the the story is moving about what the Dark King actually is and like how whatever this for the the current forty k plot is moving towards. Right, that's just my theory. It's just a game theory. And sorry, and uh, uh, that that's just where I think the forty k setting in the whole uh, is Ca- counter- most part. counterpoint counterpoint. If I want to read about a story where I have to look in between the lines of missing plot, I'd just go fucking play Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, of course. I'm not. I'm not defending it. I'm just saying it's uh, uh, how I've generally come to uh, the the 
the style at which I think they're right now. The, what I've noticed, the trends I've noticed uh, in general. Well, one trend I've noticed is that Gavthorpe fucking sucks as an author. (laughs) (laughs) Poor poor Gav. (laughs) I haven't read too many of your books, Gav. If if you're listening, I'm assuming you're listening for some reason. I'm I'm sorry. I I need to write more. I need to uh, read more of your stuff. Hold on. I I need to go. I need to double check something. I I ripped a hole in my foot. What? (laughs) What? It was peeling some, like it was really itchy, so I kept scratching. Now there's a hole in my foot. That's not even the first time I've done that to myself. Oh my god. Okay, well. I gnawed a hole in my hand once. It was really itchy. Jesus Christ. You're falling apart at the seams. Okay, I, I haven't actually read any Gav Thorpe. Hold on, let me, let me double check. Is this what happens when you have no pancreas? No, this is what happens when you're just kind of stupid. Ah, relatable, honestly. The no pancreas part is, like, just, like, coincidence. (laughs) Yeah, the the pancreas is a coincidence. Things like going to bed at five in the morning are entirely (laughs) self-inflicted. Okay, I have not read a a Gavthorpe novel, but I will stand by my statement. I've read a bunch of Guy Haley novels. That guy fucking sucks. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, Guy Haley, wasn't he the one who wrote the... The Devastation of Ball uh, duology tri- tri- trilogy thingamabob. He's the guy that they're having write all the fucking 40k so- novels, and it always ends up, Oh, the Ultramarines are here to save the day! <laughs> <laughs> because he's a hack. Well, actually, now that I think about it, yeah, that's literally what happens at the end of Devastation of Ball. So, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I like the, the those books for the most part. I'm... Um, uh, I'm I'm getting to trying to read the uh, the sort of third book in that uh, trilogy, uh, but uh, the devastation of ball. No, devastation of ball is the second one. There's the uh, darkness and the blood that is sort of a uh, follow up. Oh, I don't like dark angels, and I don't like G- Guy Haley, so I haven't read blood a- blood angels. Yeah, whatever. If it has angels in its name, it's probably terrible. <laughs> the Dante book is really good. That, that's hey, see. This is what happens when you write a story from start to finish. Gw, you you get a good story. All right, you get you get a complete story. I enjoyed that. All right. Yes, you, you get a complete story where it characterizes this person as not wanting to live anymore, <laughs> and then do a one eighty where it's like, no, I need to keep living. I need to become Primaris. That's so relatable, honestly. That is entirely relatable. Where your character does a one eighty of their fucking like character. <laughs> Me when I'm a Game of Thrones author and for the eighth season. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Balthazar Gelt should have fucking f- f- appeared in season eight. He would have solved it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of partial to Grimgor getting dropped into Game of Thrones. <laughs> it's just an or. Yeah, yeah, but he doesn't even become like. He doesn't start killing people. He actually just becomes like a really good at the fucking political stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's actually trying to. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's not because he's good at politics. He's just Grimgor and ten feet tall and about as wide, and no one wants to tell him no. <laughs> oh. he, he has one fight scene where he just cleaves one of Daenerys' dragons in half, and then goes back to trying to politic. He gets in a fucking debate. Gets into a debate with Cersei. Just eats her king's guard. And then eats the fucking mountain. <laughs> no outside debaters. No. <laughs> I, my orc voice is not very good. I kind of turned into a man from the deep south having a stroke. <laughs> Grimgor is from the deep south. What are you talking about? <laughs> he's, 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 a, well, he's a cryptid. Oh, there's no outside debaters here. <laughs> But I am supreme, he hears call from a window. <laughs> <laughs> I got a cinder block comes through the window, hits Cersei in the fucking head. <laughs> I've saved you, Game of Thrones fans. <laughs> and now I'm off to my next great adventure. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go and terrorize the next <laughs> setting. Ah. <laughs> Tyrion realizes somehow his fucking wallet's missing. (laughs) (laughs) The wallets aren't even invented, but he found a way to steal it. His fucking coin purse. Poof. Yeah. (laughs) Gone.
Stolen. <laughs> Where is it? Okay, well, you know, it's we've been rambling on. Do you, do you guys want to get uh round uh finish this off? <laughs> I, uh, I think I might. Uh, I'm out of all the plot lines and stuff I brought. Yeah, I mean, I can I can sit here and talk about Gelt and fucking Grimcore and Game of Thrones all fucking day. Oh, I can keep doing that for the rest of the night. I just want to say I love the idea of uh, Daenerys flying in on her dragons during that stupid fucking episode in season eight, but instead of her dragon being shot down by the fucking scorpion. Suddenly she just hears, I'm Supreme! And a fucking brick just comes play. <laughs> and then fucking naval cannon. <laughs> <laughs> Gyrocopter comes in from even higher up in the air. <laughs> I don't even think Gelt is known for having a gyrocopter. <laughs> He's not. He doesn't have access to those. It's like the fucking, his fa- version of the Thanos copter. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the Gelt Copter! The it has copter. a fucking period accurate naval cannon mounted on it. <laughs> fucking blows Daenerys off the fucking dragon using a cinder block cannon. <laughs> continues to go continues to still burn down King's Landing. <laughs> I'm picturing the fucking Peter Copter from Family Guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it is. <laughs> Tom. Fucking bottle of Jack Daniels in one hand, other hand on the controls. <laughs> what? <laughs> Tom. Tom was probably Tom was annoyed with me justifiably so for being late. Now he's gonna be fucking annoyed with me because I keep bringing up Gelb. <laughs> it is the only worthwhile legacy you will have. <laughs> Such is such is a legacy I'm proud to bear. Such is the power of Gelt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, we gotta wrap this up. This like we're, we're, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. With that, thank you for joining us on this episode of fucking the Gelt podcast. <laughs> Balthazar Gelt. <laughs> <laughs> we we we. In, with the Gelt cast, we endeavor to bring you more Gelt related content in the future, so stay tuned. You know, thank you for joining us, Colin. I am Supreme. Good night! <laughs> Good night! Good night! Hello! Thank you for watching this episode of the Astartes Anonymous podcast. If you've been enjoying the content, please consider subscribing or taking a quick look at our Patreon. And if you want the opportunity to talk to literally any of the members of the team that's not me, please join our Discord. Seriously, don't fucking talk to me or ping me. I will ban you. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Oh. <laughs> okay. Holy shit, fucking Balthazar Gelt. She's the, the gift that keeps on giving. The gift that keeps on giving. And so do our patrons with the patron questions. Yeah. Alright, we have a few, we have two of them. For, 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 first is coming up with uh, everyone's. It's there. It, it is there. Everyone's most annoying Necron, Linky. <laughs> Uh, who I'm now looking at it isn't e- even e- isn't even a patron anymore. I got a killer with hammers. What? <laughs> I'm looking at it. They don't. They, whatever. That's not none of my business. But they did leave a question before their demise. Linky <laughs> asks if you, a human, because of course I am totally a human and nothing else, <laughs> were given the choice of going through biotransference, would you not to do it or die? No. But I want to know who'd be willing to give up their soul for immortality and who cares about having a soul. Dude. I kind of like my soul. <laughs> I'd give up my soul for a Mars bars. I'll, uh, I'll take the biotransference. Hell yeah. <laughs> Look, is, is it still, is it still my conscious and I just feel kind of empty afterwards? Because then I'd probably do it. I don't know. It's, <laughs> I, I figure it's, it's kind of like how people feel like, you know, numb to life. All right, so there's no change happening. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I just I'm just made of metal now and don't have diabetes. Sign me up. <laughs> you know what? I dive headfirst into biotransference. People say immortality is a curse. Fucking skill issue. Give me your liver. I'm um, give me your fucking liver. I'm becoming a goddamn metal skeleton and ruling over the tomb world. Fuck yeah. Tachyon error right through the goddamn heart to my enemies. <laughs> I was gonna say, knowing you, you'd probably just through pure fucking uh, rage and determination would just end up in a leading position and would get to keep your higher functions. <laughs> I know, I, I, I hacked the fucking biotransferness, alright? I'm the pharaoh now, fuckers. <laughs> I, I, I feel like I might miss food, though. Who needs food? I mean... That, that, don't need it. I mean, that's why you get the flare virus. They don't eat, though. Yes, they they do. Come on, now. It's a condition. They don't. <laughs> they're they're definitely not tasting it. They're not. They don't have mouths. They don't. Yeah, chew. but they're still hungry. Hungry. Yeah, that sounds like hell. <laughs> so get the flare virus, then, Colin. What? You suggested it to me, so I could eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you can like pretend. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> you have a negative attitude. Gotta, gotta get your act together. That's what's stopping that. <laughs> to, to super evil robot dementia? Yeah, I do have a negative attitude to that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, it, it seems like three for three, we're all... But we never actually commented on that there's three of us, by the way. And we never will. Moving on. Next patron question. The flesh is weak. Um, Zero Shade 05 asks yes which named character would cause a waffle house to close and i think we all know the fucking answer <laughs> <laughs> lore of metal without a doubt <laughs> I, I don't think honestly there's any other character who has the the raw supreme will the raw the supreme will <laughs> the capability to shut down the Waffle House. Waffle Houses are hard as fuck to shut down to, but there is one man. <laughs> one legend, one <laughs> dare I say. <laughs> Armed with nothing but a cinder block and the heart of a champion. <laughs> and the skull of a psyker he brained. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, that about wraps it up. <laughs> Thank you. For everyone for fucking putting up with this bullshit. Thank you, Colin, very much for joining us yet again for a incredibly silly episode. Always a pleasure to be here. Thank you for, for still going through with that. <laughs> Every, everyone say goodbye to Colin. He's going into the fucking guilt chamber for a while. <laughs> 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 Good night, everyone. <laughs> Good night. Bye bye. I am supreme. <laughs>